Hello there. This is a video regarding the HP LaserJet 2300 series of printer and specifically about the problem with duplexing multiple page projects. Uh, specifically, this is a rather interesting issue uh, because it involves the magnetic solenoids that are inside the printer and a issue with the uh, adhesive that holds the uh, noise reducing bumpers in place here. Now I'm not going to necessarily talk about how to get the printer to this state. There are plenty of guides available online for that, but this is just to talk about how to fix the issue with the duplexing and jamming problems. So what I want to point out here is that this printer is probably at least five or six years old. I don't know the exact date and it was brought into us because it was jamming. Um, Basically, the solenoids here uh, help hold the gears in place. Sorry if that's a little bit blurry there. I'll try to back it out a little bit. Anyway, so these gears get held back and forth by these solenoids, which are little magnets down here. Now, originally, when HP sells these, there's a little tiny bumper um, that basically prevents that noise there. But uh, over the years, that bumper gets worn down, and then the, all that's left stuck on the metal is just the adhesive that originally held the bumper in place. And you, know, you can already probably tell where I'm going with this. Um, what happens is that the adhesive just causes this little metal armature to stick in place. And then, because printers depend on millisecond or less time differences, obviously everything goes downhill from there. So if you watch what happens here, um, basically when I release this, it should snap back right away. But if it gets, uh, if it sticks hard, you see how there's a delay when I release my finger from that. That's what's causing the printer to jam. The one that causes the duplex problems in particular, I think, is this one, which has the exact same problem as the other ones. So, we have to remove those solenoids. Once you have the solenoid removed, uh, just one screw down there should do it, uh, what you can do is remove the spring from the solenoid that holds the armature in place. And yeah, just to try to turn this into the light here, you can already see that there's uh, all kinds of black gunk caked on the top and bottom there. That's the remainder of the bumper. So here's a bumper right there and uh, there might have been a little bit of one up there at the top as well. So here and here, uh, we need to just get all of that stuff just rubbed completely off. Um, you can replace it with something, maybe wrap some string uh, or some sort of non-adhesive method, but really, for a printer this old, I'm just going to choose to leave it completely uncovered. It might make a little bit more noise, but at least we can be assured that this problem isn't going to happen in the future. So we go find some rubbing alcohol and a tissue and go to work on it. So, as you can see here, we've uh, removed all of the adhesive from the armature of the solenoid, and we've also taken it off the body of the solenoid. We can see how clean that is right there. No more of that black adhesive. Now, uh, while I was doing this, I looked online, and it seems that, uh, contrary to what I said previously, what we do want to do is actually take some kind of uh, piece of plastic or some sort of uh, magnetic resisting uh, stuff and just stick it back on the place where the adhesive used to be. The reason for that is is that a lot of times people just clean that off like I was planning on doing and um, they don't replace it and then there's a problem with residual magnetism uh, from the solenoid. So it fires, it uh, causes the metal to still be slightly magnetic and then you have the same jamming and timing issues because once again all it takes is a microsecond of delay and then the printer will jam. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick a little piece of tape back onto there and I probably can't do that while I'm holding the camera so I'll just demonstrate again when it's back. Now as you can see that's what it looks like with my little gray piece of electrical tape stuck on there. Now you can go ahead and put the spring and the screw uh, back into the solenoid and hook it back in. Just be very careful when putting the spring back on there. Because I would suggest doing it from this angle here, otherwise that spring is going to try to act like a rubber band and shoot off into far corners of your office, uh, which has already happened to me twice now, so just be careful when hooking that back on. Now, even though it doesn't have to be done, I've also removed the tray 1 and tray 2 solenoids as well to uh, prepare to clean them. Yeah, you can see how much crud is on there. Try to zoom in a little bit. Yeah, that brown patch there, that's what uh, is on all the solenoids and that's what you need to remove because it gets a 
really sticky with use. It doesn't feel as bad as the duplexer one was. But, yep, that is the uh, main cause of the sticking issue. So we'll get those cleaned off and hopefully things will work. Once you've taken care of the other two solenoids for tray 1 and tray 2, uh, right before you put it back on, uh, go on and give it a try. You should be able to uh, press on the armature uh, really hard and still not have it stick at all. So that should mean that, of course, the adhesive, uh, thanks to the little electrical tape I put on there, um, it's not going to pose a problem and we're not going to have any issues with residual magnetism either. By the way, if anybody knows where this part goes to, I think it fell off of the uh, network card box at some point, so I don't think it's anything important, but if you know where it goes, please let me know. Thanks.